Hi, this is Marina from Fox and Frolics and we are making the second in the bell dress series. This is the dress with a gathered skirt and a zip closure and you can also make it with a panel skirt with ruffles or pleats and a jersey back which of course makes it much much easier to sew because you don't have a back fastening. If you want to get this pattern or find all the links to the YouTube playlist etc then just hover over the top right hand corner in the video and then click on the info button and that will open up the link to the playlist and it will also show you the link to the website and the listings page. Now I would like everyone to Instagram this once they've done it. Please, that would be so fabulous. It's hashtag frocks and frolics, bell costume or bell PDF pattern. That will make it easier to kind of look what everybody else has done and other people can find the better costume easier. And then also please include add frocks and frolics on it and then people can click on that link and they will find the YouTube channel there on my Instagram and they can go to the website too. So for this dress I'm using again that wider lace and also slimmer lace and roses by the meter which is a bit cheaper. Now let's have a look at the pieces I've cut out. I've cut out the lining in the same fabric as the shell so the front is in one piece cut on the fold and then I've got the outer shell with the center piece and the sides and then the back has got two pieces because we have a zip and I've cut that out twice all together four times. For the sleeve we've got the binding and then just the lining sleeve and we cut that not two times but four times so that it's completely flat and then the skirt is just cut two rectangular pieces which we need to work on a little bit which are then overlocked on the side seam so when you want to cut those cut two rectangular pieces according to the instructions and then take your tip template and you put that onto the fold of one of those pieces and you taper it towards the side seam there and then cut that away and that will ensure that the dip in the bodice looks really nice. Now a lot of these rectangles once they're all gathered up there's way too much gather and it's way too heavy so you want to measure over at least 12 centimeters or four to five inches you can even go six inches and then we taper that in towards the hem sort of three quarters of the way and that ensures that we don't have quite as many gathers at the top and it's not quite as heavy and easier to get in. We're also using some tulle again as an overlay which I think is really really beautiful. So let's get started by putting the lace on. If you watch the base video which is a little bit slower than this here I'm just rushing through this Part, which we already know we're going to put the lace on overlapping onto the center panel and in this case I've actually alternated the laces I think that is really stunning and then at the top we left that one centimeter so that we can um, line it easier then we're closing the sides one centimeter seam allowance and once that's done you can overlay that with another lace and sew that down on either side. Now we want to line it. So the first step is to make sure that you don't catch the lace because that's straight and the other bit is curved. So pin that down and then sew across it one centimeter seam allowance. Then we want to snip it and turn it. And unlike what I normally do, I didn't understitch this because actually it makes it harder to get the little cap or sleeves in um, if you are a beginner that is a bit fiddly so I've just ironed it and as you can see that looks totally fine there's no understitching necessary then close the top edge of the sleeve and then we turn it understitch it and here it goes now attach the binding from the side that has the understitching that's the underside of the sleeve we we'll always start like that one centimeter seam allowance all the way around and then we are going to turn this and roll this to the outside turn it in and then stitch that one in now that is a beautiful little sleeve and we can insert that into the front 
So right sides facing each other, make sure that the snip on your sleeve is actually just the one snip which indicates it's the front, make sure it goes right into the top corner and then you can pin it. It's the same as in that base video with the ruffle skirt which is a little bit slower. You roll over the lining and you literally sandwich that together, sew it and then we are going to cut across the corner here so that we can turn it and that's nice and flat and not too thick. Snip so we don't have any tension and then you can turn it and look how beautiful that comes out. So simple really. I look stunning now. Close the neckline next, but only a little bit. We want to leave some bit open so that we can put the zip in. So open it out and put it at the back with the center back facing each other, just as you would want it. And then you just lop over that one side if you haven't understitched it, it doesn't really matter if you get this wrong, does it? Because you just, you know, either way will work. And then we close it in exactly the same way that we did with the front piece. Cut it back and snip it so that there's no tension and turn. And you can see all my little diagrams blended in. I've got, of course, a few more and they're all in the written instructions. Rule that over and out and you could just press this or you could understitch it and for the underarm I would understitch it it just sits a lot nicer so you can see I understitch just to where my sleeve starts both sides absolutely gorgeous now we want to do the side seam so put it on how it needs to be just back and front on top of each other grab the inner layer which is lining and then open it out and we're sewing from one side to the other and you want to iron it apart that seam both sides and snip either side because you always always get a bit of tension there and we don't want that there you go then finger in there flop it over and iron it always leave this iron but I've got a new one now <laughs> so put this to the side and we're going to do the turtle real quick which is just another rectangular piece gather it up either side and stitch over it and then on one edge you could put something on like a rickrack or even binding people do that and I think some of the Disney costumes have that in the film so you want to have a look um, but you don't have to. On the other side you insert a gather thread and then we're going to gather the whole lot up. You need two of these don't you? So one goes over the right hip and one goes over the left hip. So I'm just going to gather this up so it fits onto the bodice. Lots of gathering to be done here look at that and then you just swing that over and we are touching it only to the top layer of the bodice because we're not sewing this on in one like we did on the other bell dress and I would start right next to the lace that you've put on sort of it's like not quite on the tip a little bit over and then you leave a little bit at the back opening as well just so that we can put the zip in and that this is not going to be too thick or in the way secure your thread and then make sure that um, it hasn't kind of like bunched up and it's actually peeping out the other way make sure they're nice and straight and then we can pin it in and sew it and we do the same on the other side and then we can put the bodice to the side and work our skirt so overlocking the side seams first we're going to put them together and iron them apart and then we're going to insert a gather stitch or two gather stitches, one foot width and one foot width next to that along the top edge. And you can see how much fabric that is because we're taking the whole width of the fabric, which could be 150. So you can see how densely this is gathered. That's why we took a bit of the side seam. And then we want to put the bodice right sides facing onto that skirt. 
and I'm working this here, find the center of the bodice and put that on the center of the center front, obviously, and pin that in. And I'm working it in two phases. So first I go from the center all the way to the center back. And that is so that I get a really super tip. In this video, I'm showing you how to do that dip of the bodice really well. So we're sewing just from the center point here all the way to the side. And then when that is all in well and I've checked my um, gathers, then I move the gathers down a bit. They literally need to be like forced down because we have this dip. Um, it's not quite as easy as sewing straight across. So make sure that that is edge to edge here and then I'm going to sew in the other side and I'm sewing it exactly to that point again. So you can see it here. Just to that point I've stitched and we're stitching from the bodice side. And then I'm snipping the bodice off at the bottom here, but not too much. You don't want this to fray. Leave two or three millimeters standing and you can already see how nicely that tip comes out. To get this tip absolutely perfect, thread up a needle and then fold over one bit of your seam allowance from the uh, gathered skirt and put that at, an, at a right angle really over the other one and just stitch that in and secure it and that gives you a really pronounced dip there. It's The tip is beautiful. I think it's just fantastic like that. So that's a technique you can use for any dress you're making with a little bit of a princess theme. So next we're going to check that all of um, our stuff here has caught, that the trill isn't like facing the wrong way or it hasn't caught or something before you take out your gather threads, which is your next step. Then we snip the waist seam here so that we have two parts because these concealed zips really are difficult to get in if it's too thick. They might break and we don't want that. Then you need a marker pen as well, textile marker and put the zip there and then you just flick it over so that now the teeth are showing upwards and you sew that just to the edge of your dress. That's the first step. And when that is in, you wanna take the marker pen and you mark the waist and you mark where you want it to end, straight across. You also need to mark that on the skirt. If you go up from the bottom of the skirt, I didn't show that here, you can mark that. And then you can put the other side on and it should all line up. Then I'm going to sew in that groove to put my zip in. Do the zip up, do a last check. And then you can also look here at the um, back and when we come up here with our zipper foot, we go slightly over so and slightly a bit higher as well. So we make sure that can't rip out or anything. And that's your zip done, really. And then I iron it apart and I iron it from the other side. I also have a separate video in the sewing school which shows this process really slowly, but it's done with the where we close the center back first. So. Both options are okay, but you can always refer back to that. That's very slow and takes 20 minutes on its own. So we're now folding back at the top the lining and then folding the zip over that. And then we're going to pin this in. Now we need to stitch across it and normally you go straight across, right? And then sometimes the zip would push up and you've got this really horrible nose. So what you want to do is sew just a little bit lower than that. And when you do that, it'll push up and it'll look straight actually. So turn it and you'll see it here. It looks beautiful. It doesn't look like anything goes up. It looks perfect. Check that the other side is the same. And then we just slip stitch our lining too. And when I say slip stitching, I mean you have just one thread, not at the end, and you just put that one in. First you hide your thread by going in here and then coming back to it. And then we kind of tunnel through and pick up a little bit of the zip there we go into the fabric and where we come out we grab a little bit of the zip 
come back up and then try to go into the Saturn directly opposite again see so it's where you go out you come back in and then you tunnel through a little bit more and you do that all the way around and I think that gives you a really nice um, uh, lining now one thing I want to point out is in the front I've snipped my seam allowance so that it's not tight in there so that we retain some of that stretch Finally, we're going to do the hem. So you want to iron it up an inch or 2.5 centimeters. And then we're going to use a blind hemmer foot to do this hem. So that will go alongside the hem when it's turned in. And it's gonna grab a little bit of the skirt fabric and then a little bit of the hem. And when it's done, it should only be like little pin pricks. Once you iron over it, it should hardly be there. It's just, I think this is great. Now we're going to do the tulle overlay for the shoulders. And we're going to just fold them in on each other like that. Beautiful. And then we grab it and we are going to just pleat it so we get the width of the um, sleeve. And there we go and that will wrap around make sure that the open side is actually not facing the outside but the inside right so um, where you have the overlap that would now be facing you okay and now we're going to sew very close to that edge there and then we can wrap around the tool to the other side and flick that over so that we can now sew that on there as well in the ditch basically right next to it and then we can cut off any excess and that's done right it's beautiful you could leave it like that couldn't you I would attach it though strategically a little bit around the sleeve the back I've actually gathered up a bit it doesn't have to be like that you could just leave it if you wanted to come up higher in the neck and then I did the same on the other sleeve as well Now the tool, we are ruffling up right over the side seam and then I'm going to secure that with a pin and stitch it just with a few hand stitches. And then we're going to put the roses on. The important thing really is for putting roses on is that you don't see any of the netting. So I'm kind of pulling that away while I'm sewing. And you're doing that on both sides and then you're also going to put those onto the skirt. And that's basically it. I don't think this dress is difficult to make. I love it because it is relatively easy. It is time consuming though. I don't think you'll be done in an afternoon, but it gives you so many options of things to do and just play and know that if you follow these instructions, it will come out beautiful. And that's, I think, half the battle with a lot of sewing patterns so i hope you enjoyed this and don't forget you can watch the instructions which show you all about the pattern and also of course you can make the other skirt and that will show you how to do the ruffles and work with a jersey back so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time <laughs>